Hey everybody, welcome to NetTouch Plus. I am your host, Jeffrey Way, and this will be the first entry in a new series on NetTouch, not only created by me, but created by multiple people in the NetTouch author community on test-driven development specifically for PHP. We've been a little bit slow to the start line, but luckily that's beginning to change and we're starting to see the idea of test-driven development or behavior-driven development really begin to take off in the community. But still we're at a point when lots of people just don't know where to start. And hopefully that's what this series of videos and articles should fix. Now the framework that we will be using in these videos is PHP Unit. It's easily the most popular. There are some other ones like Simple Test, but we're gonna stick with what's most popular in the community. So installing PHP Unit is done through the Pair Installer. And Pair, yeah, developers have a love-hate relationship with Pair. You either like it or you're not a fan. Uh, personally, I must admit, uh, I'm not a huge advocate for Pair. I try to avoid it, especially depending upon the OS you're on. You can have lots of headaches when working with Pair. Now, what we want to do is hopefully get the entire community behind Composer, which is a relatively new package manager that's very similar. If Ruby developers, you might be familiar with Bundler, or no developers will be familiar with NPM. It's going along that same line. And we want to get that to the point where that is the standard in the community. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Composer, definitely go to getcomposer.org. And we also have an article on it at NetTut's Easy Package Management with Composer. And these links will be available in the show notes. But there's just one problem. If we go to Packagist, and this would be similar to like Ruby Gems, where you can view all of the various packages that are available. Now, if we try to set up PHP Unit, what we're going to find is that it's unfortunately not available specifically for Composer. Uh, there's a couple of reasons behind this. Mostly what it boils down to is that the creator of PHP Unit prefers Pair. He doesn't really see any reason to get off it. So where it was last left off in the GitHub threads is... If you want support for Composer, then you need to fork it and add that functionality, but otherwise they won't be doing it. So hopefully somebody in the community will step up and get that taken care of. So if we still want to use PHP Unit with Composer, our main option, at least at the time of this recording, is going to be this option right here. It's the unofficial version. It was just forked and the functionality was added. So yeah, it's not the ideal choice, but for now, especially when you're just beginning to learn, I think this will work just fine. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is get Composer installed on our machine. So if I go back to getcomposer.org, I'll click on the installation link, and you have a couple options. You can install it locally, or you can install it globally. Now, depending upon your needs, it's very possible you want to stick with locally to keep from any issues arising in future versions if you have different system set up, or you can install it globally if that's an option for you. So the first thing we're going to do is just copy this link and paste it into the terminal. I have created a learning directory within my desktop, and I'm just going to paste that in. That's simply going to download the installer and pipe that through to PHP. So now within this new directory, I have this composer.far file. If you're not familiar with phar far, that is just a PHP archive that can be run through the command line. Now, if we want to confirm that this has been installed, I'll just run php composer.far, and this is going to list all of the options that are available to us. Very good. Now, if we would like to make this a little bit more convenient, a lot of people like to move this file to their bin. And that way, rather than typing php composer, you can simply run composer, and that will be available globally. So let's go ahead and take care of that. It'll be up to you if you want to add that functionality. But I will go ahead and do that. So we'll do sudo. We're going to move composer.far, and I'm going to move that into my bin, and we'll call that composer. So let's run that, pass in my password one more time. There we go. So now you may need to restart terminal or iterm, but now I should be able to run composer. Yep, and now I can access that information without running it through PHP. So now we want to get PHP unit set up. Now I'm going to press command U to switch off transparency so we can see a little bit easier. And if I list the files, you'll see, yep, there's nothing available there. So the first thing we want to do is similar to if you've ever worked with Node.js, is we want to set up a composer.json file. So I will create that now, touch composer.json. And let's go ahead and edit that. I'm just going to edit it in Vim, but feel free to use TextMate or Sublime, whatever you want. And all we're going to do here is return a bit of JSON. So we know that we're going to require something, but that's all we know so far. So let's 
clear out of this and switch over to packagist.org, and this is where you can search for packages. Now, the one we wanted was right here. So it's the unofficial version of PHP unit. Again, not ideal, but that'll work at least for now. So we can specify a specific version or we can reference the master. In this case, I'm gonna play it safe and we're going to reference 1.6. So this is the name that we want right here. So I will come back and pass in that name. Next, we can specify a version as its value. And we noted that we wanna bring in 1.6, so I'll put that. That's a way we can specify that our app, whatever the package may be, depends on 1.6. And that way, if they update to 2.0, it may potentially break our app. So we wanna say, no, we're only using 1.6. That's as far along as we've been tested. Now, if I come back and you forget how to do this, you can always go to the GitHub page. Let's open this, and usually within the documentation, they'll give you some information. So yeah, if we want to add it with Composer, here's our object, we require it. We can optionally specify the version of PHP that will be required. I'm not gonna worry about that in this case, though. And notice, we can also specify things like greater than or equal to 1.2, and that way it'll bring in 1.3, 1.4, etc. So now at this point, we have our composer.json file. I'm gonna come back and save this. We need to run the install command. So I will run composer install. There we go, and now we can see it installed the dependencies that we specified within our composer.json file. Now what that's going to do is store those within a new vendor directory. So if we list the vendor folder, you'll see that we have an autoload.php file that is bundled along with Composer. And then also, if I clear the screen, we have this new directory. So let's cd into vendor and list those files, and we have php unit. And within here, we have the bin, and there we go. All right, so now we have this set up on our system, but how can we use it? Well, let's cd back a couple directories to our learning directory, and now I'm going to make a new directory called test. And within it, we're going to create a new file. And we'll call this, and we're not really building anything today. I just want to show you how to install it. So let's just do the obligatory uh, calculator test.php. All right, let's go ahead and edit that. And we'll begin by creating our class. So class calculator test. So that will extend PHP unit framework test case. And now we can run our first test. So maybe if we were building a calculator, and we're not really gonna build one, we'll just build a couple functions. So we will proceed our function with test, and we'll say test add. And this is going to be our test to ensure that the add method works as expected. So we will say C, we'll create a new calculator instance, and I'm going to run result equals C, add five and 10. We know that should be 15. So we're going to expect that the result from that operation is in fact 15. So let's assert that the result equals what we expect. So assert equals 15 result. And you know what? It doesn't look like I have syntax highlighting set up on this particular app. So I'm going to switch over. There we go, I've switched over and now that's working. Sorry about that. All right, so we have our test. Now we need to run our test and watch it fail. So we know that the PHP unit test runner is within that folder. So we can access that by running vendor into that folder, into the PHP unit, into its bin, and then we should be able to find it there. So of course you can alias that if you want, or there's a couple different options to shorten that. But for now I'm gonna keep it as is and run that on test our calculator. And what's gonna happen here is with PHP unit, you're either gonna get errors or failures. Now errors are going to be your standard PHP errors that you're familiar with. Failures will be when PHP unit, for example, expected 15, but what came out was 10. So what we can see here is our first thing that we need to do. Our class calculator was not found, so we need to go ahead and create that. So I will switch back, and now we're just going to require calculator.php. Next, of course, we need to create that, so we'll just create it right here, touch calculator.php. And now if I come back, we'll edit calculator.php, and within here, let's create the calculator class. So now if we run it again, now we're going to get a different error. It has pulled in the file, but it doesn't yet have access to the add method. So we get another error, and that's okay. That should be easy to fix. So we'll come right here, public function add. That should accept the first value and the second value. 
And of course, we know with a simple add method, we return A plus B. All right, so that looks good to me. Let's clear the screen, run it again. And now it's running and we see one test, one assertion, everything passed like we would expect and we get OK. Now, of course, if we have some big app and we need to namespace it, we can do that namespace app. Now, if we switch back and run it again, of course, we're going to get an error because now class is a child of the app namespace. So we can switch back over and after we require it, let's make sure we say use within the app namespace like that. All right, that should fix it. Run it one more time. And yeah, now we're getting one test, one assertion. So yeah, this is the simple process. Now you've installed PHP unit. You can use it to test. You can refer to the documentation. If you want to do one more together, uh, let's do public function test subtract, maybe something like that. And we're going to expect that our little tool, uh, we could have a setup, but for now, let's just self-contain everything. So we'll create a new instance again. We'll run the subtract command, 20 minus 8. And now I will expect with assert equals that the result from that should be 12. All right, that looks good. Let's run it. And now we're getting another error because it can't find the subtract method. So let's go to our calculator and add it here. Let's run it again. Of course, we can automate this process, but this is just your first step into TDD. And now we get our first failure. It expected 12, but only null was returned, of course. So now we can return a minus B and make sure that it accepts A and B as well. All right, run it one more time. And now we have two passing tests. And now you've used TDD presumably for the first time to build the beginnings of a calculator class. And then you would take it from there. All right, so this is the very first step in test-driven development in PHP, but plan to watch and read many more lessons at NetTouch Plus. My name's Jeffrey Way, and I'll see you later. Bye.